Hey guys, today we're going to go over uh, questions 31 through 40, and this is for the fractions and division review packet. Oops, sorry about that. I'm in the middle of printing your next review packet, so let's get that off of there. Apparently I need to change my ink, but that can wait till later. So anyways, questions 31 through 40 of the fractions and division review packet. All right, so let's go ahead and start here with question number 31. So this says, Alex has seven chapters to read over two days. We want to know how many chapters will he need to read each day. And um, so for those of you following along at home with these videos, uh, this question is probably very familiar to you. This is one I feel like I drilled continuously uh, during our class time together. And you can probably see why. Um, you know, obviously we know we're going to divide here, but it's really hard to figure out what are we splitting? You know, it's easy to know what you're splitting when you have animals or people or, you know, something that can't really be split or shared. Um, and so for this one, you know, it's either going to be the seven chapters or the two days that we're going to split up. Uh, so to help you figure out how many chapters he'll need to read each day, let's look at both possible scenarios. Uh, so scenario number one is going to be seven divided by two, and then scenario number two would be two divided by seven. So remember what your numbers represent, right? The seven represents the chapters that he needs to read, I'm guessing to finish his book, and then the two represents the days, and then our answer here, whenever we do eventually uh, get a number here, that number is going to represent the chapters per day. So chapters slash day. Um, so look at scenario number one here. Scenario number one says seven chapters broken up over two days to know how many chapters he will read per day. Sounds pretty good, right? So now let's look at scenario number two. So remember the two, that represents days. Seven represents chapters. And now our answer, that's not going to change, you know, what it's representing because that is the question. The question is how many chapters will he need to read each day? So the answer, whatever number we get, <clears throat> is representing the chapters he will read per day. So for scenario number two, this says two days broken up over seven chapters, and that'll tell me how many chapters to read per day. Uh, so just kind of hearing the way that the division expression sounds out loud, I think it's it's pretty easy to, you know, figure out which one makes the most sense. So which one are you thinking makes the most sense? Seven chapters split up over two days or two days split up over seven chapters? Well, I can't really take two days and split them up by chapters, but what I can do if I'm wanting to, you know, make a reading plan to finish reading the novel that I'm currently working on, like some of you battle the books kids, I'm sure this is very familiar to you. You make a reading plan, you make a goal, you know, like how many chapters do I need to read every single day this week to finish the book by Friday or Saturday or, or something like that? Uh, so you might be saying something like this. You might be saying like right here in scenario number one, okay, I've got seven chapters to read in order to finish the book, but I need to finish this book in two days. So how many chapters do I need to read per day? You're going to take those seven chapters and you're going to split them up into those two different days to figure out exactly how many chapters you need to be reading each day to finish your book within this certain amount of time. Uh, so the correct expression here is seven divided by two. Uh, so we're going to take our seven chapters and we're going to split it up over two days. That'll tell us how many chapters we need to be reading per day. Um, so now that we've got that figured out, let's go ahead and come over here and solve it. So for seven divided by two. Now keep in mind, this is an open response question. Um, I hope you're in the habit of, you know, writing your answer as an improper fraction and then also converting it into a mixed number with that mixed number being in its simplest form. Um, now the reason why I say keep in mind that this is an open response question is I know a lot of you have been treating this like the gridded response, like those questions we saw on the check-in in the EOG where you have to actually type in your answer. Um, and for questions like that, the computer will only accept an improper fraction. Well, most of you, you're following 
drawing along at home with paper pencil. Um, so it wouldn't kill you to, you know, write the improper fraction and then also convert it into a mixed number. So I just want to kind of cover that before we proceed with this question. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to write this as an improper fraction and then convert it into a mixed number. Um, so seven divided by two. Uh, we know that that's going to be equal to seven halves. So if you've been watching the videos, then you've seen me do this for every single video. N divided by D. What is that equal to? It's equal to N over D. Uh, so seven divided by two is seven halves. And even though we are about to convert that to a mixed number, I want to make sure you know that that's equal to seven halves in case you were to see something like this for that gridded response type of question. Okay. So seven divided by two equals seven halves. To convert that to a mixed number, how many times will two go into seven? We'll count with me. Two, four, six. That's three times. What's left over? One, and our denominator is two. So either seven halves or this particular answer right here, three and a half, that's how many chapters he needs to read each day. So day one, he's going to read three and a half chapters. Day two, he's going to read three and a half chapters. And by the end of day two, after reading his chapters, he will have read all seven chapters. Uh, so chapters divided by days equals chapters per day. And for this problem, Alex is going to read three and a half chapters per day. Uh, so I would prefer here that three and a half be your final answer. So if you don't mind, make sure you write that down on your paper. All right, moving on here to question number 32. All right, number 32, my Panthers, I'm sure you've seen this question like a gazillion times. This is where, you know, Miss Turner gets up in the front of the room and I basically act out this problem for you and I slowly move my body down through the classroom so you can watch me doing the same thing over and over and over again so that you get the idea. Uh, so let's see if you remember it. All right, question number 32. A plastic cup holds one eighth of a gallon of water, how many plastic cups can be filled from five gallons of water? Uh, so again, we have two scenarios. One eighth divided by five equals number of plastic cups. So I'm just going to put PC here for plastic cups or five divided by one eighth and that'll equal the number of plastic cups. Uh, so let's kind of do the same thing here that we did with the last question. Let's label it and then kind of read the expression out loud with the correct labels to kind of see how it sounds. So the 1 8 represents the gallon of water inside the plastic cup. Now it says a plastic cup can only hold 1 8 gallon of water. So if that's the amount of liquid that the plastic cup can hold, then that is the capacity of the cup. We talked about this word in fourth grade science, and I'm sure uh, maybe Miss Smith has covered this with you as well in fifth grade science, but if not, that's okay. Uh, so capacity, that's basically the amount of something that a container or an object can hold before it's just considered overfilled with something. Um, so if a plastic cup can only hold one eighth of a gallon of water, or in this case, that's what it's holding, then that is the capacity of the, the cup. So for one eighth here, I'm going to put, let's see, uh, CC. That's going to stand for capacity of cup, CC. And then the five represents five gallons of water. So G for gallons. Okay, so we've got one eighth capacity of a plastic cup divided by five gallons of water. Well, how does that make sense? I'm taking a plastic cup and I'm chopping it up. I'm splitting it into five gallons of water. So if I have like a plastic cup here and it's, you know, the amount of liquid it can hold right here at the very top only equals to be one eighth of an entire gallon, how am I going to take this and divide it into five gallon sized parts, right? Because that's what this, the first number means your total. The second number means basically how many groups or how many parts are you making? So if I only have one eighth of a gallon of water, how can I split that into five gallons of water? That doesn't exactly make a whole lot of sense. Um, now, if you look at this one down here, again, the five represents gallons of water. The one eighth represents the capacity of the plastic cup. I have five gallons of water and I'm splitting or I'm dividing them into basically 
one eight sized parts. I'm dividing them into the plastic cups that can only hold one eighth gallon of water at their capacity. And I'm wanting to know how many plastic cups am I going to be able to make. So this one is definitely going to be the correct expression. And just kind of make a mental picture here. I have a bunch of plastic cups laid out in front of me, and I'm holding a giant bucket that's got five gallons of water in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that giant bucket that has five gallons of water in it, and I'm going to repeatedly fill up these plastic cups with water until I have filled up all the plastic cups with water, and I have no more water in my big old jug that I was holding onto. Each of those cups can only hold one-eighth gallon of water, and then once I'm done, I'm going to go back and count one, two, three, four. How many of those plastic cups was I able to fill up? So for this one, we are definitely going to do five divided by uh, one eighth. So now I'm going to use my KFC strategy here to solve for that. All right, and remember this is that strategy we use when we are dividing with fractions, uh, in particular for fifth grade, dividing with unit fractions. All right, so the K, that means keep the first number the same. So that's going to be 5 over 1. F, that means flip the second number to its reciprocal. 1 eighth is the second number. When we flip it, we get 8 over 1. And then C, change division to multiplication. So now we've got 5 over 1 times 8 over 1. 5 times 8 is 40. 1 times 1 is 1, and 40 over 1 is equal to 40. So this would be the number of plastic cups you're able to fill up. You have 5 gallons of water. You're going to split that into 1 8 sized parts. We basically just want to know how many 1 8 sized parts are there in the number 5, and that would be 40. So 40 here, that would be your final answer. Um, even if this was like a gridded response, I wouldn't leave it as 40 over 1. I would just go ahead and convert that to 40 because really this is the, the answer in its simplest form because 40 over 1 is improper. When you simplify, you get 40. So that's really the answer that you would want there. All right, moving on to number 33. All right, so Jennifer wants to split eight cups of soup. Well, that's nice. They told you split eight cups of soup. Uh, so really split, that could be another word for a divide. She wants to divide eight cups of soup. She wants to split eight cups of soup into bowls that hold one half cup each. What is the maximum number of bowls she can fill with the soup? Uh, for a problem like this, I really like to use area models. So I'm going to do an area model first, and then we will transfer that over into a um, numerical expression. All right, so she's got eight cups of soup. So one, two, three. And while I finish drawing this here, you might even be able to flip back in your math notebook and probably find almost this exact problem, I bet. We covered a lot of these in class. So that's seven and that's eight. Okay, so we've got our eight cups of soup and it says she wants to split that into bowls that hold one half cup each basically how many bowls are we going to need. So kind of like the last problem with a plastic cup, its capacity was one eighth of a gallon. Uh, for this question, the we're going to, you know, take our eight cups of soup here and we're going to split those into bowls, but the bowl has a capacity of only half a cup. That's the maximum amount of soup that can go in that bowl. You can't put more than one half in there. So you're going to put half in the first bowl and then move on to the next bowl. And then you're going to put another half. Then you're going to move on to the next bowl, put another half, move on to the next bowl, put another half. And you're going to keep doing that until you have no more soup to keep putting in those bowls. And then we just want to know how many bowls were you able to fill up from those eight cups of soup. So that's essentially what we're going to do here with our models. We've got our eight cups of soup. We're going to split them into bowls that are... Um, half a cup in size. So basically their size is one half. So all you have to do here is draw a line down the middle because this gives you one half for bowl number one. This gives you one half for bowl number two. And then we'll just continue the process and count how many half-sized parts we made, how many half-sized bowls we see in front of us. Okay. All right. So now we're just going to count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, down here now, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hold on a second. Did I get off counting somewhere? Because that's not right. Let me try that again. Did I draw 8? Yep, I drew 8. Cut them in half. Okay, I'm sorry. I must have got off counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No, that's right. The answer is 16. Hmm. Okay, so the correct answer is not showing over here. Uh, so I'll make sure I put that information on Dojo because that is the answer. It is 16. Okay, I'm sorry about that, friends. The correct answer is not showing here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I will put a message out on Dojo as well as... Um, Google Classroom. I record these videos before I post them, uh, so I'm just now catching that, but I will try to get that information out to you guys as soon as possible so you don't look at this question and get confused like I just did. All right, so the final answer would be 16. Uh, there are, and I'm going to write this for you because I don't want there to be any confusion, there are, there are, sorry it takes me a second with the keyboard, 16 half half cup, because that's what we were doing here, half cup bowls, remember that's the capacity of the bowl, it can only hold half a cup of liquid, so there are 16 half cup bowls in eight cups of soup, okay? Again, I'm writing this because I don't want there to be any confusion from me kind of stumbling there, not realizing that the answer wasn't um, a choice. So we took our eight cups of soup, we split them into bowls that have a capacity of half a cup, and we wanted to know how many bowls could she fill. The answer is going to be 16. Uh, so that means there are 16 half cup bowls in eight cups of soup all together. Uh, now, if you were to do this as a numerical expression, you would start with your eight cups of soup, because that's your total, you would divide that into half size parts, and then from there, you would do KFC, that would be eight over one um, times two over one, because we're gonna flip this one half right here. So if you have eight over one times two over one, and you multiply straight across, that gives you 16 over one, which therefore is equal to 16. Uh, so 16 is the final answer. So maybe what we can do here is shade in A and B, because A is six and B is 10, and if you add them together, you get 16. So maybe what you should do for this one is just shade in A and B, and just say, hey, Ms. Turner, I had to add A and B together in order to get the correct answer. <laughs> that would be pretty clever, huh? All right, moving on here to question number 34. Uh, so a teacher has nine packages of markers. The markers are divided equally between five students. What fraction of a package does each student get? So this one I think is pretty uh, straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. Are we gonna split up the nine packages of markers or the five students? Well, of course we don't split up people, right? We're gonna split up the packages of markers. Plus it even says here in the second sentence, the markers are divided equally. So make sure you take your nine markers and divide them equally between five students. Um, so that one's pretty self-explanatory. So nine divided by five, that's N divided by D, which is equal to N over D. We use this when we're dividing and our answer is gonna be in the form of a fraction, which of course this case it will because when you count by fives, you never say nine. And that's because nine is not a multiple of five. 10 is a multiple of five, but nine certainly is not. Uh, so nine divided by five, that would equal nine fifths. And is that an answer choice? No, A says five ninths. B says four ninths, so C here, look at C and D, they want you to um, put your answer as a mixed number. So now we're gonna take it a step further, nine fifths, what is that as a mixed number? Well, let's count by fives until we get to nine, that'll be just one time, right? Because five times one is five, and then we're trying to get to nine, so what's left over? Four is gonna be left over. And we know that because five times one plus four is equal to that numerator, 
of 9. So 5 times 1 is 5. Add the 4 here, you get 9. That was essentially your total, your total packages of markers that's being split up. And then, of course, our denominator is 5. No. Yeah, it's 5. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting tripped up here because these answers are just not... Not fantastic right now. Um, so 9 fifths is equal to 1 and 4 fifths. Oh my goodness. Again, why is the answer not here? I'm going to have to get on to edge elastic. All right, so let's make C the correct answer. And let's change that denominator of 9 to a denominator of 5. So that's 1 and 4 fifths. That should be the correct answer. It is not 1 and 4 ninths, okay, because your denominator is 5 in the improper fraction. So you're going to have a denominator of 5 in your mixed number. So it's 9 divided by 5 equals 9 fifths. 9 fifths is equal to 1 and 4 fifths. C is the correct answer, okay. And I'll make another note to put a message out about that on Dojo. I don't know why that keeps happening. All right, question number 35. There are 10 students in a music class. They have six packs of crayons to share equally. How much of a pack of crayons will each student get? Uh, so are we going to split up our 10 students in the music class or our six packs of crayons that they share equally? Well, we're going to split up the six packs of crayons. Let's hold our breath here that the answer choices are not messed up like they have been. All right, so that's 6 divided by 10. So again, that's going to be N divided by D, which equals N over D. Uh, so 6 divided by 10, that would be equal to 6 tenths. And 6 tenths, letter C, is an answer choice. Now, of course, we could go on to simplify here. Uh, we know that 6 tenths would be... Uh, simplified to be equal to three-fifths, but three-fifths was not an answer choice here, and six-tenths was. Uh, so we're definitely going to go with C as our final answer. All right, question number 36. A Zion has one-third of a book left to read. He wants to finish the book by reading the same amount every day for four days. How much of the book will a Zion need to read each day? Uh, so this actually is very similar to the very first problem I did with you guys in the video. Question number 31. Let's head back and look at that one. Question number 31. When we had the seven chapters and we were splitting that up over two days, um, you know, we talked about how you make a reading plan and then you stick with that reading plan so that you can try to... Um, Sorry, wrong question. There we go. You stick with that reading plan so that you have a goal and you can try to get your book finished in time. And that's essentially what we're doing here. So Zion, he only has one third of a book left to read. He's going to read the same amount every day for four days. So what is he having to read for four days? Um, so what we're really doing with question number 36 here is we are taking our one third of a book left to read and we are dividing that, splitting that up over the course of four days to figure out, you know, how much of the book he'll need to read each day. So this is read per day. One third of the book left to read, divide that up over four days, that will tell me what he needs to read per day. So that's one third divided by four. And then of course we're gonna use our KFC strategy here to divide with a fraction. So K, keep the first number the same. Flip the second number. So if we flip four, remember we get one fourth because four is already four over one. And then change division to multiplication. So that's one third times one fourth, and that gives you one twelfth. So this is what a Zion needs to read um, every single day for four days so that he'll have his book done by the end of those four days. So B one twelfth is the correct answer. Oh, excuse me. All right, question number 37. Another question like this. They must be popular. Uh, so Mahi has nine chapters to read over four days. How many chapters will she read each day? So I'm sure you already know exactly what to do here. Again, we're going to take the amount of chapters that she needs to read, which is nine. We're going to split that up over how many days she has to get that done. And that will tell me uh, the chapters she needs to read 
per day. So nine chapters split up or divided over four days, that's going to equal the chapters she needs to read per day. Uh, so nine divided by four, we're going to use our N divided by D here which equals n over d, numerator over denominator. Uh, so 9 is going to be our numerator. 4 is going to be our denominator. That's 9 fourths. Um, now, I do want you to go ahead and convert that to a mixed number. It's always good to be able to go from improper to mixed and mixed to improper. Um, and that's just a skill that you need to, you know, continuously practice. So 9 fourths to convert that into a mixed number. How many times will 4 go into 9? Well, that would be two times, right? Because four times two is eight. What's left over to get to nine? One is left over, and our denominator is four. So Mahi needs to read two and a quarter chapters every day for four days in order to get that book done by the end of the four days. All right, question number 38. Miss Turner gives seven packs of food to her four guinea pigs. I wish I had four guinea pigs. Paco needs some friends. Uh, she gives the same amount of food to each guinea pig. How many packs of food were given to each guinea pig? Okay, so what are we going to split up here? The seven packs of food or the four guinea pigs? Well, the four guinea pigs, those are animals, right? We wouldn't take our four animals and divide them up into seven packs of food. That would be crazy. Instead, we're going to take our seven packs of food and we're going to say, here's some for guinea pig number one. Here's some for guinea pig number two. Here's some for guinea pig number three and guinea pig number four. So we're splitting up that seven packs of food. So that's going to be seven divided by four, and again, we're using N divided by D, so that is seven fourths. Uh, but as you can see here with your answer choices, it's wanting you to place your answer in between a whole number and a mixed number, or in between a mixed number and a whole number. So of course, that means we're going to need our answer to be either a mixed number or a whole number. So seven fourths, what would that be as a mixed number? Well, how many times will four go into seven? Just one time, right? And then what do you have left over? Well, four times one is four. We count from four to seven. We have three left over and our denominator is four. So that means each guinea pig is getting one and three fourths of the food, but now we need to know what does that fall in between on a number line? Is it between one and one and a half? Between one and a half and two? between two and two and a half, or between two and a half and three. Uh, so of course, you know what I recommend you do here is draw a number line. Hopefully yours won't be as crooked as mine is here. Um, and I'm gonna start my number line with one. And then I'm gonna count by fourths here. If this is three fourths, as long as I'm counting by fourths, I will eventually get to one and three fourths. So one, and then that would be one and one fourth. After a one and one fourth, that would be one and two fourths, but one and two fourths is going to share a point on the number line with one and a half because these two fractions are equal to each other. Um, after one and two fourths, we get one and three fourths. Hey, there's our answer. Um, and then after one and three fourths, we get one and four fourths. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but that's going to share a point on the number line with the number two because one and four fourths is equal to two. All right, so now here was our answer to the question, one and three fourths. So to know what it's in the middle of, what it's in between, we need to know what comes before it and what comes after it. So before it is one and a half, after it is two. So one and three fourths comes in between one and a half and two, and that is answer choice B here, between one and a half and two. You guys rocked that question on the check-in, so I'm sure you're experts at that by now. All right, question number 39. A drinking glass holds one third of a gallon of water. So this is kind of like that plastic cup question. If the drinking glass can only hold one third gallon of water, then that is the capacity. I'm just going to put cap here. That is the capacity of that drinking glass. We want to know how many drinking glasses can be filled from six gallons of water. So it's really almost the exact 
exact same thing. I have six gallons of water and I'm going to use those gallons of water to continuously fill up those drinking glasses until I have no more gallons of water left to continue the process. And then I'm going to count how many drinking glasses was I able to fill up. So this is going to be six gallons of water, splitting that up into drinking glasses that hold one third gallon of water. And that answer is going to tell me the number of drinking glasses that I actually filled up all together. So again, I'm going to use my KFC strategy here. Uh, so K, keep the first number the same. That's six over one. F, we're going to flip the second number to its reciprocal. So one third becomes three over one. And then C, change that division to multiplication. So that's six over one times three over one. Six times three is 18. One times one is one. 18 over one is equal to 18. So we were able to fill up 18 drinking glasses that hold one third gallon of water at their capacity. Alrighty, last, oops, sorry, last question. Well, for this video. All right, number 40. After basketball practice, eight players equally shared three large bottles of water. What fraction of a bottle did each player get? So this is another fairly simple one. Um, a player on a basketball team is a person. So we're not going to take our eight people and split them into three large bottles of water. Instead, we're going to take our three large bottles of water we're going to split them by our eight players to figure out how much water each player is going to get. Um, so again, we're using N divided by D here. And we know that that's going to equal N over D. Uh, so 3 divided by 8, 3 is my numerator. 8 is my denominator. 3 is a prime number. So this is certainly already in its simplest form. 3 eighths letter C is the correct answer. Alrighty, friends. Well, that's where we're going to stop for today. I'm going to go ahead and make myself some notes about those questions that um, had the wrong answers showing and put that on Dojo and Google Classroom. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't confuse you guys too much. If it does, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I will just continue to, you know, reiterate to you guys and your families as well that, you know, we've got the correct answers here. They're just not showing on the, the paper packet. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, let me know if you need anything. I am out of here and I will see you for the next video. Bye, friends.